thinking through our faith as Christians. I would like us to reflect on fixing our eyes on the Lord during this time of the pandemic. We are bombarded with statistics. Never have been a pandemic so followed, analyzed, and presented to us in the media like the corona virus. Every day we hear of the numbers of the infected, the deaths that have taken place. We are under the lockdown conscious of the devastation, the disruptions that have come our way because of the coronavirus. We ourselves are caught up in fear. We are shaken. We are conscious of our limitations. We have not been untouched by this pandemic. We have heard of the loss of our loved ones, the infections of those closer to us, the people we care most about. And all of a sudden, our well-being is something that now occupies us and we are conscious of where we are in terms of our health. In different places where you visit, we saw it during the time when we had masses. Vulnerability became an issue. Those with ailments, the elderly and young people, were more or less persuaded not to be part of the congregations. And that raised a lot of questions around congregations, the body of Christ, that used to be one and how divided it became. This time of the pandemic has asked us many questions, many serious questions. And as Christians, we cannot just ignore those questions. Somehow, we ought to attempt to answer them. In making an effort to try and answer those questions, we are thinking through our faith. One of the questions that we ask is, how can we fix our gaze on God during this time of the pandemic? There are many answers that are suggested to us. Some of them are not Christian. Some of them propose easy answers. And yet at this time of the pandemic, there are no easy answers. One of the things about our faith is that our faith is concrete. Our faith is realistic. And even as we attempt to live during this time of pandemic and to keep our eyes fixed on God, it helps to see our faith for what it is. Nowhere in the Christian teachings are we told that Christians are exempt from the vicissitudes of this world. Whatever suffering touches our world, it touches us. And this thought is so expressly put well in the teachings 
of the fathers of the church in the Second Vatican Council in Gaudium et Spes. When the fathers of the church said, the joys and the hopes of the people in the world are the joys and the hopes of the Christian people. Nothing that is human is foreign to believers. And as we come to terms with the fact that our faith is lived in this world with its many challenges, one thing that registers itself in our minds is that our Christian faith is not an insulation. It does not preserve us. We do not live in this world untouched by the evils of this world. Having said that, it helps also to say as Christians we can learn a lot from our interactions with the many sciences of this world. For example, psychologists tell us a lot about mental health and how in this time of pandemic we can keep ourselves as it were sane. One of the things that they say to us is let's watch our worries. Our worries can be a great source of pain and suffering. And through them, we may end up with many ailments like depression, stress. And once depression kicks in, we lose a sense of hope, a reason to live. One fellow describing depression says it's like being entombed, being in a grave. You die as you live. Our Christian faith somehow teaches us things about God. And it's on those things about God that our faith is built. We believe that this world is not left to the forces of evil. This world is not left to chance. This world is governed by a loving God. And it is this God we believe in. Even though we lose our loved ones, even though we are affected, by the coronavirus, even though we may be infected by the coronavirus, we belong to God. There is a lot of wisdom in acknowledging the things that we can do to spare ourselves from being infected. And there is a lot of wisdom in acknowledging the limitations that are there. Having done all that we could do, the rest we leave to God. As Christians, our faith says, God loves us. God journeys with us. God is our Savior and our Redeemer. It is to Him that we commend our cause. It is to him that we turn to in times of distress. The psalmist says, My help shall come from the Lord, and I lift up my eyes to the mountains. God gives us confidence. God gives us trust. Somehow, we build our positive attitude as we seek to live during this time of the virus around God. 
and we commend to his care our feet. And hence Paul can say, whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. This Christian faith of ours says to us, as Christians, we cannot be seen to be discriminating people in terms of who is affected and who is not. We cannot be seen to be judgmental. We cannot be seen to be blaming others for the virus. We take responsibility and we try and do what is within our reach. And having done all that, we, we trust that God will take care of the rest. I would like to conclude this reflection by reflecting with you on the words of St. Paul. Writing to the Roman people, Paul speaks about suffering, about pain, about anxiety, and about death. And he asked the question, what will separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? Is it sickness? Is it ailment? Is it infection? Is it death? Paul's answer to all this is, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. In all things, we are victorious. May the Lord love you, may the Lord take care of you, and may the Lord bless you.